Ever since people found out there were other worlds out there, this question has been preying on their minds. Are these worlds suitable for life? Scientists have discovered thousands of planets beyond the boundaries of the solar system, but most of them are completely different from the Earth. Still, among the multitude of diverse celestial bodies scattered across the endless expanses of the universe, there are some that are as close to our home planet in terms of their parameters as appears possible. They are warmed by the rays of their closest star, and there are great amounts of liquid water to be found on their surfaces. It is still more amazing to realize the fact that for many years, one of such worlds has been hiding really close to us. Before we set out on a space journey beyond the boundaries of our system, we have to decide on the manner of selecting a planet that resembles the Earth most from thousands of candidates. What should be the parameters of this fascinating world and what should we take into consideration first? It goes without saying that planets favorable for the genesis and sustenance of life have always posed considerable interest to scientists. However, it is no easy matter to single out suitable celestial bodies among a great number of those discovered by now. To have clear-cut selection criteria, scientists worked out the so-called Earth Similarity Index, or ESI for short. It is based on several principal parameters, a planet's radius, density, and average surface temperature. This combination makes it possible to calculate the object's mass, approximately estimate its chemical composition, gravitation level, whether or not there is an atmosphere, and if there is, analyze some of its characteristics. It also helps establish if there is liquid water on the planet's surface and other information. The standard of this index is the Earth, with its parameters assumed as ideal and its CSI equaling 1. Based on the Earth's similarity index, all the objects known to us conventionally fall into three categories. The first one is objects whose ESI is under 0.5. These are for the most part gas and dice giants as well as extremely hot or, on the contrary, cold objects. This is the category most of the solar system planets and satellites fall into. It takes just one characteristic to greatly exceed the maximum permissible values for a celestial object to be unfavorable for the genesis and sustenance of life. Let's take Venus, for instance. The radius and mass of this celestial body are very close to those of the Earth. However, due to its close proximity to the Sun and a dense atmosphere, its surface temperature is extremely high. That is why, in spite of a close similarity to the Earth, on the face of it, Venus's ESI is not high, at just 0.44. Of course, there being any life on its surface is totally out of the question. Celestial objects whose ESI is within 0.5 to 0.7 fall into the second category. These objects resemble our home planet noticeably more. They are mostly rocky worlds with relatively moderate temperatures, but it can also be ocean planets and even some large satellites. Incidentally, a high Earth similarity index per se does not warrant favorable conditions for life. For example, quite often low-mass planets are incapable of retaining a dense enough atmosphere while their magnetic field is too weak to protect the surface from lethally dangerous radiation. Other celestial bodies yet may happen to be located too close to their parent star and so get tidally locked. Of course, all these factors greatly reduce the chances of life's genesis and sustenance. As for the third category, it contains celestial bodies with a high ESI, that is over 0.7. All of these planets are beyond the solar system. According to estimates, the size of these worlds and the conditions on their surfaces are potentially close to those of the Earth. Among these planets, there is one which resembles ours most, and it lies just 12 and a half light years away from the Earth. This amazing world orbits Tea Garden Star, a small red dwarf discovered in 2003. This star is 1,370 times dimmer than the Sun. This means that it cannot be observed with the naked eye, even though it lies quite close to the Earth. The mass of this tiny star is roughly 9% that of the Sun, and its radius is about 5% bigger than that of Jupiter. 
Gravitational forces are barely strong enough to maintain the thermonuclear reaction in the star's interior. That is why the surface temperature is just 2,900 Kelvin, or roughly 2,630 degrees Celsius. As is the case for all red dwarfs, D. Garden star's habitable zone is comparatively narrow and located very close to it. Back in 2019, two exoplanets were detected in its system after continuous observations of the star's proper motion. Interestingly, one of them lies beyond the star's habitable zone and the other within. The outer planet, dubbed T. Garden C, follows an almost ideal circular orbit around the system's center. With the orbit's radius 0.045 astronomical units, it is completed every 11 and a half days. It is presumably a rocky celestial body with a mass 11% bigger than that of the Earth. Its radius is estimated to be approximately 3.5% bigger than that of our planet. Unfortunately, conditions on Teagard and C's surface are far from hospitable. Due to the low luminosity of its parent star, the object enjoys 63% less energy than what the Earth receives from the Sun. As a result, the planet's surface temperature is gauged at 47 degrees Celsius below zero on average, which is too low for life sustenance, at least in the forms we know it. Still, the chance of there being vast oceans of salty water concealed under a thick layer of ice on Tea Garden Sea, as is the case with Jupiter's satellites, for instance, shouldn't be ruled out. As for the inner planet, it is dubbed T Garden B. It is actually this planet that is the most Earth-like object of all those discovered to date. Its CSI is 0.95, which is just 0.05 less than the standard ideal value of our Earth. This celestial body lies 0.025 astronomical units away from its star and it takes it roughly five days to complete a full orbit around it. By following a practically circular orbit, the exoplanet is constantly in its star's habitable zone and it receives 15% more radiation from it than the Earth from the Sun. According to some estimates, T. Garden B's mass is just 5% more than that of our planet. As for its radius, it differs from that of the Earth by a minuscule ratio, which means that the gravitation value is also quite close to what we're used to on our home planet. This makes it logical to assume that the inner makeup of the exoplanet is highly likely to be similar to that of the Earth. There is a massive metallic core coated in a thick layer of molten silicate mantle reckoned to be at the center of the planet. The celestial object's outer part is covered with a relatively thin crust of solidified rocks. Mathematical modeling shows that the average temperature of T. Garden B is 28 degrees Celsius, which is 14 degrees more than that of the Earth. This means that conditions on its surface allow the planet to have and retain a notion of liquid water, and the planet's temperature profile is potentially favorable for most microorganisms. Even though T. Garden B is quite massive, and is capable of retaining a comparatively dense atmosphere, the radial velocities method, which is used for exoplanets detection, is quite inadequate for obtaining any information about the atmosphere's composition. But it should be borne in mind that a planet's temperature profile directly depends on its atmosphere's composition. For example, a dense atmosphere with a high percentage of methane and carbon dioxide will cause a strong greenhouse effect. Dense clouds of water vapor, meanwhile, will on the contrary reflect sun rays, which reduces temperatures. We should also remember that no matter how optimistic the parameters of this fascinating celestial body might appear, it is not entirely flawless. Being in close proximity to its parent star, it seems that T. Garden B is always facing it with one on the same side, which causes sharp temperature differences between the day side and the shadow side, as I've already mentioned, T. Garden's star is a red dwarf, and this class demonstrates a tendency to suddenly flare up. The amplitude of fluctuations in its luminosity may reach 30%, which greatly affects the planets located close by. Still, the chances of T. Garden B's capability of sustaining life are high. Biological creatures often demonstrate incredible viability, and their ability to adapt can't but amaze 
For example, the ocean could serve as protection against lethal radiation and sharp temperature fluctuations. Its upper layer is potentially capable of absorbing cosmic radiation, while its currents could dissipate temperature contrasts. For all we know, as time goes by, primitive organisms might evolve in the warm depths saturated with energy and microelements. Just a tiny chance is sometimes enough for life to develop into something bigger. Every year, astronomers announce the discovery of several dozen new exoplanets. The number of new worlds discovered in the past 20 years is hundreds of times bigger than in the entire history of observations. Thanks to technological advancement, scientists constantly obtain new instruments for our knowledge expansion. And one can't help feeling that very soon, the long-awaited seeds of Somalian life will be detected in some corner of the universe.